It's Friday night, and you're now clocked in on The Late Shift with Will Merrill. Featuring everyone's favorite HR director, Cornet Granville. Tonight's guest, comedian and actor, Reggie Raw. And musical guest, Kalisha Brown. Bub's almost brand new, so that can't be it. It has to be electrical. Could be mechanical, could be the fan, could be a lot of things. This is going to take a while. Maybe full reset. Come with me. What's up, everybody? We are back here at the Late Shift with your boy, Will Merrill. And we got our guest for the evening. This dude needs no introduction, so guess what? I'm going to give it to him. This guy right here has been doing acting, comedy, modeling, all that good stuff, man. Y'all might have seen him on that one episode on Common Law or that other episode on Breakout Kings. Or you might have seen him on Instagram in the Panera Bread commercial where he ran out of the store like six times in five different outfits. One of them outfits, he went in there twice. But anyway, without further ado, <laughs> without further ado, my dog and yours, Mr. Reggie Raw. What's up, man? Thanks for clocking in with you, boy. What's up, brother? How you doing? I'm good, man. I'm good, man. So one of one thing that I just want to know is why acting? Why acting and comedy? Why, like, what made you get into that? Uh, why acting? Why comedy? Because um, that's my calling. Yeah. That's what I. That's what I love. That's what I'm passionate about. And when you're passionate about something, that's what you pursue. Mm -hmm. I'm good at both of them, so that's what I do. Right, right. Now, let's talk about the acting first. So, what was your first role that you remember? Like, what was your very first role that got you like, man, this is it. This is what I want to do. Uh my first role. Uh, would probably be like um, a high school play that I was in. Okay. We did a mixture of like Romeo and Juliet and Hamlet too, and we put like a hood spin on it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And um, I was always a natural at acting, mm -hmm. so you know I auditioned for it and I got the part, and you know I was I was bit by the acting bug then. But that was something yeah. that I always knew that I wanted to do. But growing up in the hood, we didn't have like those neighborhood theaters that I can get into. Right. Right. So this was something you know. My outlet was was doing it through the elective in high school. Okay, okay. Now speaking of like you know, you from Baton Rouge, right? Right. From Baton Rouge, from the BR streets. Man, how difficult is it to break into the acting business coming from the south? Um, it's not that difficult now. Mm -hmm. Because for the past 10 years, we had the tax incentives here in Baton Rouge that kind of put Baton Rouge on the map and everything. So it's not that hard now that it used to be and most of the th and most of the auditions that people have is pretty much done via like um like via internet you tape your auditions and you send you can send it off all over the country okay. if they're looking for you so it's, it's really not that hard now okay cool cool now we're gonna switch gears right now and get into the comedy part of it all right so comedy man like what to me comedy is like life it's the air I breathe and stuff like that. How are you able to, just, you know, get into the zone from going from acting to going into comedy? Like, how what gets you into that zone? That's easy. You know, as a comedian, comedy is more natural for us. It's natural. It's yeah. like breathing air. Acting is more of like, um, it's more of a discipline thing. You got to be disciplined. It's more technical. The acting, the acting part of it, because. Right. You could be a really good actor, but if you don't know how to be technical within the frame, then they're going to put that stuff on the cutting room floor. Mm -hmm. You know? With comedy, it's more like therapy. Yeah. And I got a chip on my shoulder. I got a lot of, I talk a lot of crap, you know what I'm saying? And you know, a lot of times, if you talk a lot of crap, you're going to find yourself in a lot of fights, but I can do this on stage, and people will take it for what it is. Right. A joke. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's more, you know, the, the comedy is just more, it's just more natural. It's therapeutic. Right, right. Where the acting is more like, it's more of a discipline thing, okay? I get that. I get that. So what brought about Reggie Raw? What brought about the, the, the Raw in Reggie Raw? What brought that out? Parental advisory because this stuff is graphic. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. When I first started off in the game, I was, I was searching for like a name. Because you know my idol is Red Fox. Mm -hmm. 
okay and it, like that's like a rock co comedian icon legend you know one of the greats if not the greats you know and when I first started off, my name was Reggie Reg. Okay. And Reggie Reg didn't do me no justice. I would get on the stage and I would open my mouth and people would be like, damn, that was like, you know, that was a lot. <laughs> it's funny, but it was a lot. And then I'm just walking around and I'm just looking at the name Reggie Reg, Reggie Reg. And then I remember like up in middle school, people used to call me a, 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 a fake Eddie Murphy. Yeah. And I was thinking about Eddie Murphy Raw. And I was like, okay, I want to give people kind of like a discretion that, that, you know, how I'm coming on this stage. You hear Reggie Reggie thinking something kind of wholesome or whatever, something kind of clean, yeah. comic, and that's not what I do. Right. So I decided Reggie Roy had a really good ring to it, and it kind of like prepared people for what it is that I'm about to bring to the stage. And by raw, it doesn't mean that I'm getting up here like being filthy mouth or anything mm -hmm. like that. It just means that I'm being honest from where I come from. Right. I grew up in the real world, not Disney world. You right. know what I mean? Right. So that's what the raw is. It's just like the just honest. Honestly, put it out there. We don't. Sh I don't sugarcoat. I don't sugarcoat anything when I'm on stage. Yeah, I get that. Now, coming from a comedian with the with the talent as yours, with that maybe to distinguish between the acting and the comedy. Do you feel as though now in the climate that society is, that comedy is being attacked? And I mean by that, like by like the PC culture. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. I mean, one of the things that first attracted me to stand-up comedy is that I can be myself. I can I can say what I want to say because my intention is to 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 make to, to make you laugh, to tell a joke. You know, the greats, right. the ones who build the foundation of comedy from the beginning. You know, Lenny Bruce. You know, yeah. um, you know, um, um, Rodney Dangerfield. Um, um, you know, Red Fox, like I said, um, Joan Rivers. Those people are all raw, and that's those are the people that I looked up to. And now, I don't know, I guess it's like a millennial thing. Mm. And I blame their parents on that. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Coddling their kids, protecting them from this real world that we live in. Right. And it's just like everybody's getting their feelings hurt. And it's like, okay, if you want to be sensitive, hide under the bed where it's safe. But if you go to a comedy show where they're serving alcohol and you're smoking cigarettes, yeah. then you got to prepare yourself for some grown folk stuff. And I do feel like comedy is being attacked, but I feel like lately within the past year or so, I think that, it, I, I feel like the ties are shifting. People on the other side, on our side, who, who respect comedy for what it is, I think that those people are starting to look at it and they're like, no, we want our comedy back. We don't, we, you know, if, if you don't like it, if you sensitive about something, that's fine. Go watch something safe. But I want to listen to something real, authentic. This is the world I live in. And I, and I I see, a, I see, a, I see a change in that. Okay, I, I get that. I get that. I agree. I feel as though, like nowadays, with the way comedy is almost as if it's being policed. Yeah. By people outside of the comedy realm. Right. Like we're being policed by non-comedians, mm -hmm. right? and we are. We don't have a union for one. We don't have, yeah. you know, gatekeepers. We don't have uh, people like puppeteers or anything like that. We're our own. We're our own genre. We're our own, like, village, so to speak. Right. And so I feel as though, like, comedy now has been attacked, I guess, because no one has attacked it before. And so now it's like, people are like, man, you know, you can't say this, you can't say that, you mm -hmm. know, and then they're digging up old tweets or old stuff from YouTube or your old MySpace page. And, yeah, and, yeah. And you're paying for that now. Well, I was going to say, like, it, it, it's always been attacked. Yeah. But, you know, now that, like, there's social media out there, you have people that go home after the comedy shows and they cry. You know, this is what this person said about this person. My grandmother was a crackhead or my grandmother had one leg or something like this. And it's like they get an audience and then people are like, you know, I feel sorry for this person. Right. And then now we have to be held accountable for something that we said on stage, which was a joke. Yeah. I tell people, like, it's my intention. My intention is to get up there and to tell a joke. The, the best thing you could do if you don't find a comedian funny is not laugh because I have one or two choices I can either j junk the joke or I can either retweak it yeah. work it out right. and the only thing that would irritate me with an audience is if you allowed yourself to get offended because that wasn't my attention I'm not trying to offend you Yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying so I get that. well folks if you still feel as though you want to do comedy Mr. Reggie, what is the advice out there for those that really want to actually either get into acting or get into comedy? What advice would you give out there to someone watching right now saying, you know what, I want to do that? Get on stage. Just get on stage, be yourself, 
Find your voice. Don't try to be the comedy police. When you get up in the game, that's, I notice a lot of open micers, because you know they got levels to this stuff, you know? Yeah. The open micers, they like to um, criticize other comedians and what they're saying and what they're talking about on stage. If you start doing that, it's counterproductive. You got to find your voice. You got to find who... You, you should know by now who you are as a person. And... Um, Understand something that you're writing. I look at like uh, with comedy, like your writing is your rule. Yeah. For gumbo. Right. You know what I mean? If, if you mess your rule up, the whole gumbo is going to be garbage. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So your writing is most important. A lot of people, they go ahead of themselves and they go on an open mic tour <laughs> 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 with a bunch of crappy jokes. And you yeah. can do as many shows as you want to, but if, you're, but if your writing ain't on point, you're pretty much wasting your time. Yeah. That's, a, that's a waste of time. So just find out who you are. Get on stage first and just, like, find your voice. Find out what makes you...